the end of October. Um, it's uh, Fred Miller, who's from the International Shipmasters Association and Lake Huron Lore uh, Maritime Historical Society. Uh, he's going to be talking about Great Lakes disasters, and we know there's plenty of those. So it should be really interesting. Almost for mm -hmm. Halloween age, too, so perfect. Um, some of the other things coming up this year, we have um, the holiday tours. After starting after Thanksgiving, the lighthouse is all lit up with Christmas lights. It's really pretty fun. You can yeah. climb the tower at night, so it's exciting. And then on uh, December 9th, we have Santa Claus and his live reindeer coming to visit. So oh. if you haven't seen a real reindeer before, they are fascinating pictures. Oh, okay. They're very cool. Exciting. They're very cool. Um, so I'd like to introduce Robert Campbell. Hi. Today. Hi. He's a fairly well-known uh, photographer and author of Great Lakes vessels around here. Yeah, I did his classic ships of the Great Lakes. Uh. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, his uh, photographs have appeared in the Michigan History Magazine mm -hmm. and other Great Lakes publications. He's been photographing ships here since 1967. Yes. Correct? Yes. So decades of experience here. Um, and he's actually been fortunate enough to get into some places that not all of us can go. Um, he just showed me pictures from inside the administration building at the Sioux Locks. Yes. So some pretty unique views. And was a passenger on some of the uh, classic A uh, passenger on the Chief Wauwatam, a rail ferry that crossed the straits. Yeah. The captain let me ride that back and forth. And, yeah. um, and I was able to be a passenger on some Steinbrenner freighters. Uh, I used to get free rides on the ships once a year like from about... 1984 to 1994, the Kinsman Company let me ride a ship, and so I got a lot of pictures on the Steinbrenner freighters. So yeah, this program is like, I show some of my early pictures and then my trip on the Chief Wauwatam, the Steinbrenner ships, and the last part I, I show the, like, more or less the pictures I take today, like digital pictures along the St. Clair River. So, um, okay, I'll get this started up then. Uh, and once I get this started, uh, um, you know, I kind of have it, each picture is like eight seconds and I have it dissolve into the next. If, if you have any questions, if you could kind of save it till the end of my program, I'd be, okay. Okay, I'll get this started. Yes. Well, I used to ride the ferries as a kid across the Straits of Mackinac before the Mackinac Bridge. That's me with my older brother. And so I would ride ships such as, you know, the ferries such as the city of Petoskey and uh, the Straits ferries between Mackinac City and St. Agnes. And that's how I became interested in ships. You know, these are old steamers. and. And as a kid, you know, riding on these things across the straits and then seeing freighters going back and forth, it just kind of, I was hooked on ships. And, you know, and, I mean, black smoke, too. These were like old-time ships. Um, and my dad took this picture. It's not the greatest of quality, but that's the Chief Wauwatam in black. And... And we'd go up to the uh, Sault Ste. Marie to see my uncle, my uncle Jerry there on the left. He worked 40 years at the Sioux Locks, and he'd always talk about the ships, you know. And this was he, the picture of my uncle on the left there in, 1950, eight, in 1955. It was a centennial for the Sioux. And he'd always talk about the Wilfred Sykes, you know. And, and uh, so, I mean, I was hooked on ships going up to the Sioux and also having my uncle talk to me about boats. So that's my picture of the Sykes. But I started like, I got, well, 1965, I bought a Know Your Ships book, you know, from Tom Mance at the Sioux. Um, this is one of my early, my first pictures was the Champlain at the Sioux Locks in 1966. Then this picture I took of the Welland Ship Canal in 1965. You know, all I had was a little brownie camera. Um, 1967, they blow whistles for the people. I think a lot of people, they had relatives, you know, maybe, you know, if, if somebody's family, you know, and, and worked on, so they'd always blow whistles or quite often. This was 1967 at the Sioux. 
And this one I took in 1969, the George R. Fink. By the ferry. Mm-hmm, by the Sugar Island Ferry. Oh, I, I used to like their hamburgers at Clyde's also. That was good too. Yes. William P. Palmer, a U.S. steel ship. And Walter Sterling, Cleveland Cliffs. They were like straight deck, a lot more straight deck freighters back then, you know. And um, this eventually got lengthened, plus hit a self unloader. So they've changed their appearance. You know, many of the ships have. Did they rebuild some of the ships to lengthen them? I think so. Like yeah, this was Matthew Andrews. You know, these pictures I took at Mission Point, right by that Sugar Island Ferry. This is that, that Rotary Park. I took it in the spring, and I got another ship there in the summer. I like the Ford bolts, and this was the Benson Ford. And this was a John Purvis, a tug, and this was a barge Maitland. Now, boy, this is 1974. I guess it was the last year that this Maitland operated, but uh, I don't know where they are going, but they. I think they used to haul lumber and other things on this barge. And it was going through the Canadian lock. So I actually um, drove all the way over to Canada so I could you know, take pictures of it going through the Canadian lock. And I kind of like taking pictures in the wintertime at the Sioux. And this was Ashland and the Macar leaving the MacArthur lock. And one of my favorites was a Ryerson. Well, I worked at General Motors, and I always had the week off between Christmas and New Year's, so I'd, I'd try to go up to the Sioux and get some winter pictures. This was Paul H. Carnahan leaving the MacArthur Lock. The front cabin, the classic look is just beautiful. Yes. I don't know how big those pine trees are now, because I, I took that back in the, like the 1970s. Benjamin F. Fairless. And I went down to the rock hut, and it was, uh, I climbed up to these rock pile in the wintertime, and it was, uh, it was kind of, I was kind of taking a chance because you really can't see the cracks and holes between the rocks. But I, I did take a few pictures from up there. And this is a Coast Guard Cutter Mackinac, which is now a museum at Mackinac City. And red. Okay. Yes, it's red also. Yes. And John G. Munson. It's actually painted red now, too, but this is back in, well, 1976, they had the bicentennial colors. And I used to do a lot of hiking west of the Sioux, and I met this lady named Ruth Stevens. And uh, she, then she, uh, and she lived out there, and she rented me a cabin for $10 a night right on the water there. And I found out she knew my Uncle Jerry, and she also was the secretary to the head guy at the locks. Wow. And so... So these are pictures I took from out when I rented her cabin. You know, I kind of like, it's just a little different atmosphere when you have the water. And that was Arthur M. Anderson. And uh, that was Cliff's Victory, which I think went to scrap about 1984 maybe. But this was, I took this in 1978. And this was my friend uh, Ruth, and this was um, taken at her office in the administration building at the locks. Um, she got me, and this was back in the, before Engineers' Day, and they just didn't allow people into the locks, but she allowed uh, permission for me to go in for the first ship of the 1974 season. So this was the Arbrooks Angus um, uh, sitting at the dock uh, uh, in April 1974, and then uh, the next day, the Coast Guard Cutter Mackinac went out first through the Pollock, and then the Arbrose Angus opened the season. Was that 1974? 1974, uh, April 1974, the first ship of the year to Mackinac go through the Sioux. Huh? He was on the Mackinac. 
OK, OK. So I kind of like the snow flurries, a little bit of ice in the lock. Oh, sure. you know, well, they had some ice out there. Oh, yes, yes. And so I took pictures of the first ship of the season. I guess they use the, the, there's a ladder and some people walking up on the deck. I had to stand with the security, stay with the security guard, I guess. But they presented a top hat, I guess, to that captain. And I met Tom Mance. Uh, my uncle Jerry knew Tom Mance. He said, you like ships, you should meet him. And Tom, he introduced me to Roger LaLever, and I'd spend time at Roger LaLever's um, grandparents' cabin. We'd go out in a small boat to take ship pictures. And Roger's now uh, puts out the Know Your Ships book. But these are a few pictures of the ships that I took from uh, the boat dock at Roger's uh, grandparents' cabin. He was on a St. Mary's River near Nine Mile Point. Okay. And then we'd go out for take pictures of ships. And I'd try to get recordings of the whistles of the ships, too. And the next one's the Buckthorn. Sons is a self unloader. This had a nice whistle. They're different whistles now, they're more like horns on a lot of the ships, you know, but. It's so very puny. Yes, yes. As I call it. Uh huh. This was Case and Jay Calloway uh, displaying the bicentennial colors in 1976. And Raymond Rice, uh, Cleveland Cliffs, another fleet that's been long gone. This was a time that Raymond Rice backed out of the MacArthur lock and went to the carbide dock at the Sioux because it had engine trouble. So I put these pictures on Facebook, and, and somebody that worked on this boat said that's why they called it Puff, because they, they you know, continuously have engine trouble. But I talked to some, one of the mates. He let me on board so I could take pictures, and I can't remember his name. But, um, but see, after I met Roger LaLever, I guess I started taking boat pictures like crazy. And this was about 1974 and 75. This was Amico Tankers, Amico, Wisconsin. Uh, I was going to mention Roger Lever got me into taking black and white pictures. I kept thinking black and white's more permanent than color, but my color slides have held up pretty well. But that's why I started taking black and white. But the, the Yashica twin lens I was using, the, the detail has been really good on the old black and whites. So I've been taking a little of each. And this is Roger Blau, uh, 19, October 1972, which was his first season. I got the seagull in there, too. And, and this is, huh? This is a. Uh, Roger Blau, I, I photographed coming around Whitefish Point. This was uh, with my digital camera about 2016. I had to go up and sign books. But there was snow on the, the Canadian uh, highlands, um, which those high hills are like 30 miles from where I'm taking my picture. I think they might have called that Mount Ball. I took quite a few, you know, as they got closer. Whitefish Point is where they have the uh, museum, and uh, they have the Edmund Fitzgerald Bell is up there now. 
So I, I took the pictures of the uh, lighthouse when I was up there, and it was a dusk. Uh, and here's the, the Fitzgerald Bell. Uh, I was up there, I was actually, I was a bell ringer back in 2006 for the Fitz. So I, when I, and these are a few pictures of the Edmund Fitzgerald taken by a friend of mine named John Vernakis that worked on the ships. He took, and this is a picture I took six months before she went down. This was May 1975. I was in Roger Lelever's uh, motorboat. The captain was blowing the danger blasts at us because he thought we were going to cross in front of the bow, you know. And and that's Roger's picture of, of the stern. And November 1975, two weeks after the Fitzgerald sank. Roger Lelever, he worked with the Evening News, uh, Sioux Evening News, so he got he, me on board as, I, uh, as his assistant. We were on the or, um, uh, Coast Guard Cutter Naugatuck for a rethrowing ceremony for the Fitzgerald. And we were going to go right out to where the spot where she sank, but the winds were like 60 miles an hour, uh, just, and this is just about 12 miles west of the locks. So we just had the re-throwing ceremony in Whiskey Bay, which is near uh, uh, Brimley, uh, just about 12 miles west of the Sioux. Uh, this was with the Canadian Coast Guard Cutter Verandri. And the Chief Wauwatam, I got to ride this. Uh, the captain let me ride as a passenger. And this was like, oh, I got the whistle blowing. It's, um, and this is ever since riding the ferries before the Mackinac Bridge. I always wanted to ride another coal burning ferry, and I wrote the captain, and, and he said passengers weren't allowed, you know. But he, when I saw it, met him in person, he said, "Fine, come along." You know, he let me ride about twenty times. So, 19, February 1977, I went up to ride the chief. Um, Actually, the watchman said, "Just talk to the captain in person," and that's what I did. And he said he let me. He said he let me ride. So, um, but anyway, I, I, it was kind of fun getting winter time going up there in the winter time. Um, is a very photogenic ferry, and it was a ferry that operated at the, at the Straits since 1911, and about 1984. Six, I think the dock collapsed in St. Agnes, so they just that put an end to the ferry service. But so I took my black and white camera with me also and took pictures. And um, I thought the black and white would kind of make things look old, you know. And uh, you know, but I, I thought it's I like color, but black and white's you know different, you know. And but that boat put out a lot of black smoke. And this was when he first, my first trip riding across from St. Ignace to Mackinac City. I kind of, I found that old picture about the same place, but taken in the 30s. And that was our uh, wake going through the ice. And that was the shadow of the, the yeah, the, the distinctive shadow of the smoke and smokestacks on the ice. Yeah, that's the bridge. And that's the regular wheelsman. And then they, the, the first mate said, you've been taking a lot of pictures of us. Maybe I could take some of you. And so he took a picture of me. And it, I thought, man, it looks like I'm picking my nose, but I'm really not, you know. But, that's you back in the day? That's me, but I had black hair back then. <laughs> 1976, I think. And that was an old picture I got from the, and the, from the State of Michigan Archives, and that's the one that I took. You know, I, and this. It been so cool to ride that thing. Oh, yes. And this was coming into Mackinac City. 
Mackinac City looks a lot different now. I think it's got a lot more hotels, motels up there. And, but this was coming into the dock. Um, and the chief had like a, a propeller on the four, both ends, on the stern and on the forward end, you know, to the, the, the propeller on the forward end would help uh, churn up the water to help break the ice. And this was uh, the train in Mackinac City. And that time, 76, they're taking a lot, they're shipping a lot of coal up, you know, up to the um, uh, Sault Ste. Marie to uh, Algoma Steel. Then I tried more black and white, you know, because it makes it look old, you know, like taken take, you know, in the 30s or 40s. And they took coal all the way to the Sioux on the Wauwatan? Uh, no, well, they crossed the straits, with the, then they would go, uh, the rail line would take, oh, the Sioux yeah. line would take it up to uh, Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. Yeah, this would be the Sioux line would unload the chief in St. Agnes. And I guess that winter was so hard in 76, 77 that the, the, the ice completely froze. The Algoma Steel was going to have the boat ship the, the, the coal up there, and then they couldn't get through. So they had to go uh, by rail up to the Straits and cross on the chief and go on up to the Algoma Steel. That was leaving the dock in St. Agnes. And, I like that one with my little, like, my timbers and everything. I think it looks cool in black and white. The first mate said the ice was plenty strong enough, you know, for me to walk off to take my picture, but I still felt funny because I knew I was walking over water, you know. <laughs> and that was a big ship, wooden ship wheel they had on the chief. I'm seen, seen in color. It was, I thought it was unusual to have the white steam and black smoke like that. And then I had trips on this uh, uh, Kinsman freighters, and their, their Kinsman flag, it looks really like a Michigan State flag, really, to me. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. But anyway, I rode different Kinsman ships. One was the Henry Steinbrenner, which was a coal burner built in 1916. And this was the, cab, the pass, little passenger cabin I had. It really had pretty dark wood. And it was being a coal burner. I, I took pictures of Bob Powell scraping out the ashes out of the boiler. And this is after we left Buffalo. We, I rode from Buffalo up to Duluth and back to Buffalo. And this is after on Lake Erie has the coal pile. That, you know, we uh, loaded coal in Erie, um, actually Erie, Pennsylvania, just outside Buffalo. This was at night on Lake Erie. And they had a fire and lifeboat drill on, on the Steinbrenner. <coughs> And we got up into the St. Mary's River and there was fog and ash actually, that's a shadow of the Henry Steinbrenner cast on a fog bank by the rising sun on the other side of us. And so these are a few pictures I took where we were um, anchored for fog in the St. Mary's River. And finally the fog finally lifted. And this was going through the locks at night. Another trip, though. This was another trip when I was on there. I think this trip was on like the year before the one I took the fog pictures. But it had a nice woodwork in its pilot house. Small pilot house, you know. It's it's a lot. Is that you again, me? No, that's that's the actual second mate on that one. Sorry, and, I just wanted to ask you. <laughs> no, I. Who's navigating for me? Yes. That was sunset on Lake Superior, and we went up to uh, Duluth Superior, and here we're loading grain. And that's the Steinbrenner at the uh, Cap 6 elevator in, in um, Duluth. And this was downbound. We were passed by 2,000 footers, the Stuart J. Court, and I think the other was the Burns Harbor. And this was uh, some wave pictures I got uh, on near Whitefish Point. But there were a lot of hatch covers on that ship. I guess for deckhands, it was a lot of work. And 
and this made black smoke on Lakes, Lake Huron. And this is the second mate, Ronnie Ashburn. He liked to fl he'd fly his kite, you know, on the, from the ship. Uh -huh. And then I had trips on the Hen uh, Kinsman Enterprise. Uh, this was originally called the Harry Colby, built in 1927. And I took the picture of the, um, this was the original builder's plate, you know, for the Colby. And my friend John Vernakis that worked on the ships took this picture of the Colby in his later years. And this is a picture I found of the Colby in his earlier years. Probably taken in the 1950s. And this a picture I took of the Enterprise uh, uh, as we were docked at uh, Buffalo. Yeah, I was lucky to get these trips on the Steinbrenner freighters. Um, you know, it's, this was at the fog on St. Clair. <laughs> yeah, eventually it's all <laughs> Yeah, I'd take my tape recorder all the time. I'd ride these ships, you know, try to get some whistle sounds or. That really adds to it. Yes. This is a watchman on the, on the Kinsman Enterprise on the foggy St. Clair River. And this was Adam E. Cornelius as the fog was starting to lift. I was going to mention, a, a ship did pass us, the Lee H. Agurtha, on the St. Clair River in the fog, and I didn't see a thing. It was just that thick, you know. We could hear the whistles. And that's Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. And now we're out on Lake Huron. And they had steam winch, you know, for uh, opening uh, and shutting the hatch combings. They'd use cables and they'd hook it up to that steam winch. It was like 1927 technology. And this northern saw it all landed on the, on, the, on the Kinsman Enterprise and I, he let me take all the pictures I wanted. I guess we we're six miles offshore and I guess it was tired of flying, you know, and, and actually, it, it was trying to sleep, and, and their deckhands were starting to chip paint on the deck right above it, too, you know. And, and this was in a St. Mary's River uh, near Nebish Channel. We were passed by this Canadian um, um, Coast Guard cutter called Bartlett. And I've never, I don't know where the Bartlett is now. I never really heard of it. I talked to Roger Lelever. He never knew there was a Bartlett. So I had to find out more about if this is still around. And this was, um, in the, in the locks now, we we're, uh, we're, we're uh, in the MacArthur lock and Algo North was in the Pollock and um, Ralph, we passed the Ralph Meisner. And this was going into Duluth. And we'd go up to Duluth and, and load grain to take back to, to Buffalo. And we had to wait, we, ain't, we docked here, we were waiting for a saltwater ship to leave the grain elevator where we were supposed to go, so we kind of just docked there. So, uh, boy, I just took my tripod with me and my camera and took a bunch of pictures of it as it was, you know, docked. I think I probably could have done better with a digital camera with these night shots now, but boy, in 1989, they didn't have them. No, and it was hard to get a lot of them. Oh yeah, it was just, and that's a picture of me there, and I looking like I'm working. You know, there was steam coming out the winches, and it just looked like I'm working, but I'm not. And this was a Buckeye uh, heading out towards uh, the area lift bridge, and here we're heading out the area lift bridge at Duluth, heading out into Lake Superior. And. One thing you have to do after loading grain is wash the grain dust off the decks, you know, hose it all down. And this is a picture I took in the St. Clair River of um, Arthur M. Anderson passing us. I guess the Anderson's laid up right now.
And this was an old freighter called Myron C. Taylor that I photographed just above, right about out here. She was coming out under the Blue Water Bridge and we were downbound. But it's an old style freighter, you know, and I love the pilot house. In fact, I don't have the pictures in here, um, but the Edwin H. Gott was right behind this boat, and I thought, uh, what a difference in types of ships, you know, between a thousand footer and that one. And Roger Lelever was on the Kinsman Enterprise when it went towed for scrap in 2002. These are a few pictures he took, but that Myron C. Taylor that I took pictures of is this one, that Callie met. And she, uh, Roger said it passed uh, the uh, Kinsman Enterprise for the last time and gave a nice three long two short salute. And when I did get a digital camera, I got the picture of the uh, Kinsman Enterprise in a scrapyard. And I also had trips on the Kinsman Independent this boat is still sailing as the Ojibwe, but it was uh, for a lot, for a lot, it used to be a Ernest R. Breach for Ford Motor Company before Kinsman bought it. And, and they let, I rode it one time in 1990. And this, we we're in the St. Mary's River and anchored for fog. And so I, the thousand footer was next to us. So I did that dissolve thing, but it was a fog lifted. And this was uh, upbound on Lake Superior. A nice calm morning. Um, they had the George M. Steinbrenner's initial on the bow of the, of the freighter there. Guys are putting a rope together. They use ropes for tying up the ship. And I thought, back in the 30s, they were doing the same thing. You know, uh, it's, you know a lot of the things they did aboard ship were you know, the same type of things putting ropes together. And this was uh, loading grain in Duluth. And this was uh, early uh, sunrise on Lake Superior as we were downbound. And this is, as I say, that Kinsman Independent now sails as the Ojibwe for Lower Lakes. And, it's, uh, and that's Mississauga was next to it. But the ship is, yeah, probably one of the last of the straight deck freighter still sailing. And then I took some pictures with my digital camera. Uh, I got into digital, and these are pictures I took in the, around here, around the Blue Water Bridge and St. Clair River. And this is the lighthouse. And I was gonna say back in the, I, and in early pictures, I took 1968 was April was my first trip to Port Huron. I got the William Clay Ford under the bridge and as well as the Charles M. White. So this is my very early slides, April of 68 from here. And then um, I used to be able to go up on the Blue Water Bridge too. And this was before the new bridge and so I took pictures, this is Carroll Lake. In a spring, you'd get that, uh, the, you know, the different shades of, of color in the water. And this is Ernest T. Weir for Columbia Steamship. And this was Edward B. Green. I went over to Point Edward to get this picture. Willis B. Boyer. It's now a museum ship called the uh, 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 Colonel James M. Schoonmaker. And that's Walter Sterling. I early showed an earlier picture, but you know, it's length in here and it has that self unloader. You know, my earlier picture showed as a straight decker. And uh, this is like ship photography, like very recent, like to, you know, like just the last year or so, a few years. This was under the Blue Water Bridge, the Herbert C. Jackson. The digitals look pretty nice, but you know, actually the scans I've gotten from my two and a quarters or even the slide scans aren't too bad, you know. Digital's a little better, and I think with digital, especially at dusk or night pictures, you can <laughs> do better than you could with film. You have more control. Yes, yeah, and you can see what you got too. Yeah, that's the best part. Yes, yes. 
And this was Algo Wood coming down. I took this from the little statue of Thomas Edison, I guess, uh, just, just above the bridge. And it's, that's Case and Jay Calloway, and it's say about the same place. But for two bridges, they did a pretty good job, you know, you know, they blend in real well. This is Arthur M. Anderson uh, down towards St. Clair. That's Maumee, which is no longer uh, around. It was scrapped about 2012, I think. And this is a slide of one of the Algoma boats. Algo Way. Oh, uh, now they have like, instead of freighters, they have like tug barges. This is one of the saltwater ships from the Thomas Edison Inn. And one of the thousand footers. I used to see a lot of some like shorter and smaller ships and a lot more of them, you know, than, you know, than what I, you know, I used to maybe see 20, well here I might see 20 ships a day, well back in the 70s or so, Whitefish Bay. And this was when they had the tall ships come up, this is Soren Dot, uh, this was uh, from Norway or Soren Det, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it was a cool looking um, tall ship, I think built in like 1890s or 1900. Looks pretty ornate. Yes, yes. It would have looked nice with the sails up, but it still looks good, you know, like that. And this was another one of those tall ships that came up. And Montreal, Algoma Montreal was one of, I think, the last Canadian straight deck steamers. And, and um, she went to scrap, I guess, maybe two years ago. And this was down by St. Clair in the wintertime. You get some of the like, uh, tinsel and ribbons out there. And, and I was going to say, even in the wintertime around Christmas, you have this lighthouse looks really nice uh, lit up. And there is my uh, Fort Gratiot lighthouse. And then these are museum ships, uh, older ships like you can still see today. Milwaukee Clippers in uh, Muskegon. And this is an old postcard I scanned. Milwaukee Clipper used to run uh, between Muskegon and Milwaukee. And this is a picture I took, you know, I took the tour, it's, uh, you know, of the Milwaukee Clipper at Muskegon. And this was the uh, builder's plate, it was originally called the Juniata from 1905. And, and it, they did it, when they remodernized this in the 40s, it was more like this, this 50s look, you know, the soda jerk, you know, there. And, and so, um, and William G. Mather is a, a museum freighter in Cleveland. And this is, the picture I took of the Mather in April 1968, downbound under the Blue Water Bridge. And 
And this is a picture of the Mather at the Sioux Locks. This was in a Pollock for Engineer's Day in 1975. And this is a, a picture in the galley of the, uh, of the dining room of the William G. Mather. So they saved a few of these freighters. The Valley Camp is also at the Sioux, and uh, the William A. Irvin's at Duluth. And then if you go to Toledo, this James M. Shoemaker is a really nice museum ship. And originally, uh, this is an old picture I found of the Shoemaker when she was sailing, probably taken in the 1940s. And Paul Lamar uh, III, he really was instrumental in, in, in getting the Shoemaker to look the way it does today. These are a few pictures. This Bill Harrison, a custom photo, it helps me put my DVDs together. He let me put in some of his pictures he's taken with his digital camera, the Shoemaker, and he kind of did this painting effect there, and he did this with his black and white, you know. And he's got a wide-angle lens, too, and that's, these are some of Bill's pictures. That was the en that's the engine room of the shoemaker. And that was in the forward uh, lounge, you know. It, it kind of looks like 30s or 40s still. And this picture I took, this is the pilot house of the shoemaker, as you'd see it today. The, they had two wheels up there, too, you know. I didn't, don't know why, but anyway, it's, it's, it's really pretty up there with the wood. And that's my picture of the shoemaker's uh, engine room. And it was Great Lakes Engineering. It was built in 1911. And that's my last picture. I end with the sunset, so I kind of hope my little, you enjoyed my little presentation. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay.